Hello and welcome to this Icon Data API tutorial. My name is Eve. I'm founder and managing partner of the Python Quants. Today's tutorial is about derivatives analytics and we are going to show how to calibrate an options pricing model, which is actually a numerically involved topic and computationally demanding. And in particular, what we're going to cover are three points. Retrieving options data, then I briefly introduced the Merton jump diffusion model, which is from 1976 already. And we are going to calibrate this parsimonious model and we will see that the model is capable of uh, replicating observed market quotes of plain vanilla liquidly traded options pretty well. And such a model can then be used to price, for example, other non-traded or even exotic derivatives. Let me move to the Jupyter Notebook, just starting here. So, as usual, the imports and uh, a look at the versions, in particular what we use in this uh, Jupyter Notebook here is SciPy, which stands for Scientific Python. Within the uh, let's say comprehensive SciPy package, we find, for example, routines for numerical integration, like Quad um, that we're going to use, uh, or um, a sub-package, which is called SciPy Optimize, which provides us with uh, brute force optimization, as well as local optimizers, for example. Let me do the imports, and skipping through the versions here, so that we have a check of what will be used there and after all the imports we can connect to the icon data api proxy or the application need to be running in the background for this to work first step here is retrieving options data we're going to retrieve raw data first uh, we will pick out just a few data fields in particular pricing data the expiration date of the options, whether it's put to call, strike price, a close price, and the implied volatility. And we are going to retrieve data for the German DAX index, which means European options, puts, as well as call options on the German DAX 30 blue chip index. We've retrieved um, 249 data rows. So when we have a look at it, we see that the underlying risk factor itself, which is the DAX 30, is presented here first, so that we get the closing price here delivered with the options chain data. And we can pick this out, for example, for later usage. And what follows, I'm going to separate the call prices from the put prices, and I will put um, the correlated rows in a separate data frame as well as the put related rows. For what follows, actually, I'm just using uh, calls. So the calls are kind of in the foreground and we pick them out here. And this little cell here is actually translating the string based dates presented in the data frame into timestamp information that we can use. So after the separation, we have now a data frame which is called calls, which contains the data for all call options relevant. But we will further narrow down the number of options that we're going to use later on for the calibration because it's still quite a few here for a single majority in particular. So we provide here a moneyness criterion which um, in particular here is set to a limit of 500 in terms of the deviation that we allow for the strike price from the current index level. This is done here so that we have after this selection step just 20 of the original um, 200 49, which includes the underlying, the puts, and the calls left. So this is our narrowing down process. And with this data, we'll have a look at it, we will implement the calibration. So all the strikes, as we can see here, are not far away. Options have a rather close 
money is or almost at the money. The data visualized, we pick out just close price and the implied volatility. On the left hand side, you see the closing prices from the data set. On the right hand side, the implied volatility, um, where we see that we have different implied volatility levels as we are used to in financial markets for different strike prices. Something that is, of course, not in line with the basic assumption of the Black Scholes Merton model but it is something that the model of merton namely jump diffusion which was published a few years later can accommodate time of this tutorial and scope does not allow to go into the details you find in the jupyter notebook a brief description the model of merton here the jump diffusion one in risk neutral form is parsimonious model in particular what it adds to the black skulls merton model approach is a jump component where the jump itself is normally distributed and we have so to say three more degrees of freedom beyond the volatility the constant volatility of the diffusion that we can use for calibration and pricing for details i refer you to my book derivatives analytics with python which discusses this model and others um, in detail also, of course, providing Python code for the implementation. The approach that we are going to use here for the calibration is based on Fourier pricing. And to this end, what we need is a characteristic function, which is presented here with the risk neutral drift term. And we can combine this with the option pricing result from Louis, a paper published in. 2001 in order to come up with a semi-analytical formula here an integral that we can evaluate numerically and it's a real integral although Fourier transform typically involve imaginary integrals and, and numbers and evaluation uh, Luis came up with a solution that uh, we see here where we just have to numerically uh, integrate a real valued integral the translation to Python code is straightforward in the sense that we take the single equations that we see here, not having defined yet the single parameters of the model, but we define the characteristic function first here, as you can see. And this, once again, is an exercise in translating the formula to Python code, which is in general kind of straightforward. The second function that we're going to use is the integration function, which in turn relies on the characteristic function here in its inner part within the equation there. And last but not least, the Lewis formula itself for the pricing, so that we have three layers, if you like, three connected functions that we use. And the application is illustrated on the basis here of some assumed parameters so nothing here is about the calibration yet this is just something that we fix so we start with a strike level that we set to the current index level we assume a call option majority of one year constant short rate of um, half percent constant volatility fusion and jump frequency expected jump size and jump size volatility but these are all assumptions more or less out of the blue and we just need to put these parameters into the pricing formula to arrive at the value of the call option here in this case. Next, the calibration. Calibration is based here on the, the root mean squared error, where we measure for all the single option quotes, 20 in total that we're going to use, First, the absolute difference, then we take the square, the average of that, and afterwards the square root. So here you see the formula. Again, this is a topic which is discussed in detail in my book, Derivatives Analytics with Python. The error function and the calculation of the model values is um, here presented in the function called M76 error function, which expects as input a tuple of parameters. So that is afterwards here and then translated into sigma, lambda, mu, and delta. And it returns the root mean squared 
error for the calibration. So the calibration itself now is done in two steps. We first do a global optimization. I'm going to start this process because it will take a little while. Um, there will be quite a few hundred actually um, evaluations for all the 20 options. So that's the reason why it's taking a little while. And we see here reported in the last column, the current value of root mean uh, squared error. And in that sense, current means the lowest value so far discovered. We see in between there are much higher values, but this is, so to say, keeping score, keeping track of the lowest value. And we will try to have this value as low as possible, where zero would be an optimal fit, actually, which we cannot expect. But um, this is the target here for the minimization. Second, we do a local convex optimization based on fmin. This is here above a brute force approach where we simply run through different combinations for the parameters. But now we are starting already with the result from the global optimization. And we do some local convex minimization in our case here with the hope that after this rough scanning of the surface, so to say, we can now do much better by exploiting characteristics of the function. But what we see here is that after a couple of iterations, we um, get certain values. And if we, for example, now lower the x and y tolerance, and we repeat this. What you can see here, we end up with 3.12. When I repeat this exercise, I would expect first this to take a little longer, but paying the price of longer execution, I would afterwards also expect better results. This now takes, as forecasted, quite a bit longer because we have lowered the values for the x tolerance and the function tolerance levels. And we see already an improvement here. And I would expect further improvements during this time until we reach either the maximum number of function calls or maximum number of iterations or our just redefined tolerance levels. A few more seconds, then we should be good to go, meaning that we have found something, and you can see it here. Um, the um, root mean squared error has been improving now with the additional iterations. In the first run, we ended up with 3.12, and now we are still lowering it, being at a level around 1.77, and after one minute, 24 seconds, we have now reached the maximum number of iterations, and we can use these optimal parameters, given, of course, our general parametrization for the optimization, for the minimization, to calculate the model values. and now here, when they are added to the data frame, which we called calls, we see now an additional column which contains the model prices. And they need to be compared to the column with CF close, which is the data field as retrieved from the Thomson Reuters Icon Data API. Quite a few numbers, 20 in total. And we see the numbers are pretty close, but we should do a little bit of a closer inspection. And to this end, let me first do a plot of two. So here in this chart, as you can see, our model prices are actually pretty close to the market quotes. So not too different, but nevertheless, we can spot differences here. So here I was going in there, but I might do it that way so that we have a better look. And you see, of course, there are differences, even though there are at first inspection uh, not too large, but we should go and analyze this in some more detail, namely in terms of the absolute differences. 
this is what we call uh, calculate first and call diffs here and when we plot the diffs series here we see yeah we have differences of course and they range roughly between minus two and plus three here we have an outlier which is uh, 3.6 but the rest more or less is between minus two and plus three. In terms of relative pricing error, we can also have a close look by calculating the percentage deviations from the prices. And you see they are in general between minus one percent and plus one percent. We see the biggest deviation here in um, terms of um, the relative deviation with about 3.5% for the lowest price that we have. But this is due to the approach that we have taken um, because here the deviation might not be in absolute term the largest one, but in relative terms, this relates to the lowest option price in our data set. And therefore, deviations here, of course, have in relative terms a larger weight. Therefore, we see here the highest deviation. But this could be adjusted for when we would choose a different function as a target function for the minimization. For example, uh, minimizing the relative differences instead of the absolute ones would give us a better result for this particular price. But this depends on what exactly is the goal of the calibration. Another alternative would be to use implied volatilities directly, but here we illustrate the whole approach based on absolute derivations. In conclusion, this tutorial has shown how to retrieve options data based on chain RICs. So we've retrieved data for a single maturity on the German DAX 30 blue chip index. I've introduced the Merton uh, 1976 jump diffusion model, and we have calibrated the model and have analyzed the results that we have seen again for financial numerical as well as programming details with regard to option pricing models and not only the one presented here as well as for the calibration of such models you should refer to my book derivatives analytics with python as usual you find here towards the end the icon data api developer resources um, you should check them out in particular also here since we are working with um, chain rigs, the article on retrieving chains data. This brings me to the end of the tutorial. And for me, it remains to say happy Python coding, good time, work with options. And now you have seen how to calibrate an option model to market quotes. And this could be the basis for more sophisticated analytics tasks like the pricing of exotic non-traded derivatives. Take care. Bye-bye. See you in the next tutorial.